Hi, welcome back to Artefel Online here in Harrogate. We don't have any sunshine this morning, but we do have Sugata Mitra here to talk to us. And uh, thank you really so much for coming along and, uh, and for having a chat to us. I've, I've followed your work now for uh, since the late 90s, I think, since the late 90s, in the Wall yes, product, yeah. project. And, uh, and I've been really interested in uh, what you've been doing. So it's great to have you here. <laughs> thank you. It's to nice to be here. Um, I'm sort of quite interested in, in the use of technology, but I, I have a, a lot of friends who have been tweeting mm -hmm. um, while during your uh, presentation, and uh, some of them are quite outraged. And uh, I think some of the comments about, you know, they're, they're saying things like you're suggesting that, you know, teachers are redundant now and, and things like that have, have really sort of brought about some strong reactions. Could, could you respond to that? Do you think teachers really are redundant now? No, not, not now. <laughs> They will be, uh, like many other professions, so mm -hmm. I don't think anything special about the teaching profession, mm -hmm. but um, uh, you know, uh, like uh, doctors or bus drivers or uh, you know, that, that sort of thing, um, mm -hmm. they'll all be redundant one day. Um, so what should we start planning to do in our future career if we're gonna, going to be re redundant? I guess if we had the ability to quickly change profession mm -hmm. as new professions are born mm -hmm. uh, that's the best preparation we can do at this point in time because yeah. my generation had static professions yes the one after has dynamic professions but professions which change over decades mm -hmm. uh, the next one after that will have professions which change much more rapidly than that mm -hmm. So it's almost as though your entire education is swept from under your feet mm -hmm. and you're told that that's not needed anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, you need them to quickly not fall down, uh -huh. but get on to the next one. Yeah. So should teachers be using computers in the same way to skill up and uh, prepare themselves? You know, the it's future? not so much about computers anymore. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, there isn't a computer. In, in a sense, everything is a computer or, or nothing's a computer. Uh, it's not that box on the table with a monitor. Yeah. So it's not about computers, it's about the internet. Mm -hmm. And the internet, we must keep in mind always, the internet is an intangible. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, you can't say, where is the internet? You can't say, I've lost the internet. <laughs> so, so when dealing with intangibles, uh, we should not use the, the paradigm of how we deal with tangibles. Mm -hmm which is, I think, uh, a frequently made mistake right now. Mm -hmm. When you say, this is the way the internet should be used, mm -hmm. as though it was a uh, WC. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, one, one of the things that I, I think some of the teachers are mentioning is, it's fine to say that, okay, kids can go on to, onto the internet and they can learn things through that, but one of the main reasons um, students still come to class or, or parents still push their students to go to school is the motivational factor. And if, how will they get that motivation? Where will they find that motivation? By going to school. I'm not yeah. uh, remotely suggesting that the school as an institution should not be there. Uh -huh. But uh, children go to school in order to meet their friends. <laughs> if you ask any child, he'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, the fact that they also need to study is, is kind of uh, there mm -hmm. uh, and, and the child might even feel that it's politically correct to say I go to school to study mm -hmm. but what do you like about going to school would be my mm -hmm. friends so that has to continue mm -hmm. um, except that what you learn in school has to change quite significantly and how you're tested for what you've learned has mm -hmm. to also change very significantly yeah, the testing is an interesting one because it, it, certainly that's something within uh, English language teaching that a lot of teachers are quite critical. A lot of their teaching has to be test driven. How can the testing change though to be more kind of, um, I guess, inclusive of what the student wants to learn? The testing, I think, has to focus now on um, your ability to answer questions or solve problems. Mm -hmm using whatever is available mm -hmm. as opposed to 
the way it's done now is your ability to answer questions and solve problems using only your head mm. and nothing else. Uh -huh. That we need. To, that's the change we need. So the internet becomes an extension of your intelligence. Your in internet, that... your mobile phone, mm. your friends. Mm. These are the things which we use in real life to solve problems. Mm -hmm. So we should be tested in our ability to solve problems using those methods. Uh -huh. And if, if students are still going to school, but they're not, there aren't teachers there or teachers aren't needed anymore, how would those schools be structured so that students don't just kind of go and chat with their friends and not do any work? Well, again, uh, when, you know, when, you say, when I say teachers may not be required, mm -hmm. I'm not talking of the presence or absence of a human being. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I, I myself have not put this correctly. I would say teaching may not be required. Uh -huh. So the teacher is there, he, he's a friend. Mm -hmm. He's there and he, he may say things like, well, what shall we do today? Yeah. He, he might say, by the way, you may not have thought of it, but geology is a very interesting subject. Uh -huh. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, so he would be kind of directing students he, or, he, he, or, or maybe sort of prompting students towards different things. He, he would actually do something very specific and not very easy to do. So it's not even as though his job had become any easier. Mm -hmm. He would raise issues and questions which perhaps the children will not be able to raise by themselves. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he will raise them in a way such that you as the learner would really like to know the answer. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. um, the, one of the other criticisms that I've heard is that um, a lot of your research has been working with, with kids in India um, who I, I think it's, it's fair to say from my experience of India as well who are very motivated and, and still think of school of being able to go to school as a real privilege and an honour and that, that's great and, uh, but I think a lot of British youth is kind of very disillusioned with school and they're, they're kind of very negative about it and, and and I think some people think maybe they wouldn't have the same motivation to go along and learn and they'd end up just playing computer games on the, on the computer instead of learning. Well, uh, it's, a, it's a shortcoming of my, my writing actually. Uh, the answer to your question is that I have plenty of data on English children. Really? Plenty. Uh -huh. Except that that data came in at a time when people were beginning to call me all the time to listen to what I had done before. Uh -huh. So I haven't had a chance to publish all of that data. I'm very happy you asked this question yeah. because first of all, let me say very categorically, it is not true that English children do not engage with school activities. Mm -hmm. It is true that English children do not engage with activities that doesn't make sense to them. <laughs> yes. Indian children don't behave that way because they come from a more Victorian background than the English children uh -huh. where they're told that they cannot refuse to do anything. Mm -hmm. Here, since the children are not told that, they quite openly disengage if they can't make sense out of something, <laughs> which, which I think is brilliant of them. Yeah. Um, every time I've managed to evoke their curiosity, they've engaged completely they have equal to or better than concentration levels from Asian children. Mm -hmm. They work better collaboratively than Asian children do. And right. they produce deeper uh, answers uh, than uh, Asian children, mainly because their English is much better. Uh -huh. So, uh, so, you know, I mean, I don't want to flatter England, but, you, <laughs> but you've got brilliant children. Yeah. Well, I have a daughter, so for me that's <laughs> fine to hear, that's nice to yes, hear. Yes, and, and, uh, and I think that it is really unfair and perhaps damaging mm -hmm. to hold a view that, that they are not as engaged with learning uh, as others are. Mm -hmm. um, this is not true. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, that's good to hear anyway. Um, I, 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 I was listening to one of your talks once before about, um, and you were talking about gr the granny cam. Could you tell us a bit about how the granny cam came about and how that works? <laughs> it's actually not granny cam, it's granny cloud. The granny cloud? The granny cloud. Uh -huh. The granny cloud is basically a, a loose uh, internet group of individuals who are interested in children's education. They're not necessarily grandparents. They. Mm -hmm people who are interested and who are willing to give about an hour a week mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, rigorously over the internet mm -hmm. to use Skype with 
schools or groups of children or, mm -hmm. or whatever. And of course we have a method by which we um, sort of screen them mm -hmm. so that we understand that the people who are doing that uh, you know, understand how children should be spoken to and maybe have experience in, in dealing with children and, and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And uh, then we allocate them and uh, now there is an uh, automatic system, a, a website through which you can register for it and then you get schools who have registered and the school and the granny then come together mm -hmm. and, uh, and you hold uh, what's generally referred to as a session. Mm -hmm. And as one of the grannies put it, I think uh, very well, a session is not a lesson. Mm -hmm. So what happens in these sessions? Um, it's a chat between mm -hmm. a grandmother and her, her, her grandchildren and their friends. Mm -hmm. and it's a chat about anything at all. So the other day, for example, uh, one of the grannies had a chat about uh, jelly. And, uh -huh. and she actually showed the children in India how she was going to make a jelly. Mm -hmm. And she made a jelly. And then she showed them the jelly. And the jelly nearly fell off the plate. Mm -hmm. And then the children were sort of laughing at her. And so it was all great fun. Mm -hmm. They learned what a jelly is. Mm -hmm. Presumably, in life, one needs to know what a jelly is. Mm -hmm. And sure. uh, they, 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 they learned that, but they all had a jolly good time. Yeah, great. Uh, do you not think it would be more efficient to actually use a trained teacher in this way? And Do you think there's something that they can get from people who aren't there kind of directing conscious teaching rather than people who are? Uh, I don't have a very clear answer. We're trying to formulate that and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's quite perceptive of you to ask that because I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure should I... Is the, is the qualified, experienced teacher the best option in this case? Mm -hmm. Or is it that uh, a friendly, grandmotherly figure is, mm -hmm. is what is most important? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know yet fully, but I think both are, are important mm -hmm. and uh, they will fulfill different needs. Yeah, I, I, I was um, talking to uh, one of the other, one of the other plenaries earlier on, and she was talking about the uh, efficiency of inefficiency, and how um, what what you can perceive to be, in a very kind of cold analytical way, to be efficient can in fact be inefficient, and you know by by building up more emotional connections, which seem sort of inefficient, you can actually deliver more learning in that way and maybe that's a kind of similar thing to the to the grannies they're kind of efficiently inefficient or something like yes. that yeah. it, it is it is possible you know the, these uh, grannies sometimes do really stupid yeah. funny things mm -hmm. and children would remember that stupid funny thing for much longer than mm -hmm. when she was really teaching very well yeah, you know, yeah. That, that, that sort of thing I've also noticed that when children work on self-organized learning environments, mm -hmm. um, let's say that there was a lecture on a particular day and also a self-organized learning thing, years later, they will re remember every single thing about the self-organized learning exercise. <laughs> if you ask them what was the lecture about that day, and they almost all of them are blank. Uh -huh. Yeah. The, the <coughs> self-organized learning thing is, is quite interesting. It's, the acronym is SOUL, is that right? Yes, could, could you just give a, a, a kind of basic um, overview of how that should work if teachers want to maybe try doing some self-organized learning with their students? Well, first of all, uh, I, I, will, uh, I, I will say what it is in, uh, in a moment, but first of all, there is a, a kind of a handbook available mm -hmm. on yeah. the TED website. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, look for the word SOUL, toolkit yeah. on the TED.com, yeah. uh, then you get that. Uh, yeah. which, but, to, uh, but, but very briefly, mm -hmm. what it involves is um, you take a group of children, uh, a good number, maybe 24, mm -hmm. and you give them about five computers, mm -hmm. or there should be five computers available, mm -hmm. so that if they wanted to use computers, they would necessarily have to use it in groups, mm -hmm. or right. not use okay. it at all. Okay. And in this environment, you then ask them a question. And as I said earlier, the question has to be engaging. It, mm -hmm. it, it, 
I, uh, to give an example, you wouldn't ask a question like how tall is the Eiffel Tower because mm -hmm. given search engines, it will take you a second to answer yes, that. Yes, that's right. But you might ask a question like why was the Eiffel Tower built? Mm -hmm. now, that's a deeper question. Yes. And, uh, and children find it easier to engage with that question rather than with the other one. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so having said the question, and you build up to it. It's not as though you come in and just write down, here is the question for the day. Mm -hmm. You say, you know, in Paris, there's this strange structure made of steel. It was mm -hmm. the tallest thing ever, blah, 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 the whole story. Mm -hmm. And then you say, but I wonder, I always wondered, why was it built? Why mm -hmm. did they spend so much money building that? Mm -hmm. And shall we, shall we take a look at that using the computers? Mm -hmm. So hopefully by then you've got your interest levels. Um, now the children, can form groups, they have to in fact, but mm -hmm. you haven't told them that they have to form groups. Mm -hmm. So they form whatever groups they want. And then they change the groups. Mm -hmm. You see, first of all, they, you'll find that the friends group together, mm -hmm. uh, but you very soon find that because they're allowed to look at each other's work, mainly because you haven't told them not to, mm -hmm. but you, the first time when you try it, you need to tell them that there are no rules. Okay. So don't think that you have to sit quietly or you can't mm -hmm. get up or you can't walk. Mm -hmm. You have to break all the regular rules. It's very hard to do yes. uh, because they don't believe you. Yeah. But once they actually practice that, then the group structures will go on changing. It becomes a very dynamic, chaotic kind of situation. Mm -hmm. And after about 25, 30 minutes, or when you see the interest levels flagging, mm -hmm. then you say, okay, can some three or four of you report mm -hmm. what you've done? Mm -hmm. uh, or if they're formed groups, then you say, you know, if we, uh, if we take groups as one, group one, group two, and group three, uh, then can we have three reports from the three groups mm -hmm. on what they found? Okay. And then they just come up and report that. And uh, you don't value add to it as a teacher. Mm -hmm. What you do is you admire it. Uh -huh. And usually, okay. and it's usually not hard to admire. So, so yeah. you, you would say, wow, that's, I didn't know that. Or you'd say that, that I, I wouldn't never have imagined that you can do that in 25 minutes. Great. Just that one sentence, yeah. helps enormously. Yeah, uh, that kind of reinforcement it, it, and that, validation. That reinforcement, yeah. Yes, so that's what a soul is basically. Great. Great, so if you're interested you can download the toolkit, it's on the TED website, TED website. so Google Soul Toolkit yes. yeah, and you should be able to find that and uh, start giving it a try. Thank you very much for coming along and talking to us and um, will we be back in a minute with some more? We'll be back in a minute with a few more interviews. Okay.